More now on the economic impact of the pandemic. In 2020, the global shutdown plunged the world into a financial slowdown, to say the least. Yet the pandemic also was good eventually for some businesses. Nearly 600 people became new billionaires during that time. According to Oxfam, the pandemic was a, quote, profits bonanza in the food, energy, pharmaceutical, and technology sectors. In her new book, Crash Landing, Semaphore Business and Finance Editor Liz Hoffman gives an inside look into how some of the country's biggest companies navigated the chaos. And Liz joins us now. Liz, good morning. Congratulations on the book. Thanks for having me. So we're talking about Airbnb, American Airlines, Ford, Hilton, Morgan Stanley, just to name a few. What was your big sort of broad takeaway of how they managed and how they came out the other side? My first takeaway was just how blindsided they were. These are CEOs who should have the best lines of sight into these global businesses, these you know halls of power connection with governments, and they were as in the dark as the rest of us, which I found actually a little comforting in the end. Um, you know, the, the upshot is that everyone did pretty well. Um, and largely that's due, I think, to the incredibly quick and robust response of the government, um, which really just threw a $6 trillion backstop behind American businesses and, and, um, and ensured that whatever weirdness of the economic moment that we're in right now, um, you know, we came very close to total collapse and it didn't. So let's talk uh, about Airbnb as a case study. Brian Chesky, the CEO of that company, I mean, they're running a business that's based on people going and staying in homes and other people's homes in most cases. How did they manage the crisis and how did they benefit in the end? Yeah, I mean, they came into 2020 expecting to go public, right, to take their place in the Silicon Valley pantheon. Um, and, and Brian Chesky, as I write in the book, had, had spent the holidays of 2019 with a big stack of prospectuses saying, what, what's our story? Like, and, and the story he landed on was this is going to be the year of connection. We're going to bring people mm -hmm. together. And that just always stuck with me as I, as I you know, reported the book out. You know, I, you know in, 20, in, in April, I mean, they were really left for dead. The idea, if you think about it, that you would go into a stranger's right. house just seemed insane. Insane. Um, they raised money. It was very expensive money. Uh, they had to cut their valuation steeply. Um, but ultimately, they noticed something starting in May and June of 2020, which is that people did want to travel, but they didn't want to spend a weekend at a Vegas hotel. Right. They wanted to go to the Catskills for a month, um, and they pivoted very quickly to long-term stays. And by the end of that summer, they were ready to go public, and they wow. did it by the end of the year at more than a hundred billion dollar valuation. Mm -hmm. I mean, just such an interesting bookended pandemic story coming and going. You know, one of the more interesting companies, at least to me, that's on this list, Ford. Jim Hackett, CEO. I mean, Ford is one of the original corporate foundations of this country. Been in business for a hundred years. And now, according to some people, they are on a par nearly on electric cars with Tesla. What happened to Ford during this interim period? You know, they came very, this was an existential threat for Ford. Think about every part of their business. They couldn't make cars. Their yeah. assembly lines were shut down. Their factories were not safe. You would not go to a dealership and buy a car. The idea that the economy was going to collapse, who would be spending $40,000 on on a brand new Ford? Um, and they were incredibly indebted. And ultimately, uh, I think did two things really interestingly. One is they raised money fast um, with a, a big help from uh, from the Fed and the Treasury. And, uh, and they really stepped up in a way that I think is important. It's, it's hard to remember now, but there was this, this sort of fear and uncertainty and kind of strange earnestness in the early days of the pandemic. And they said, you know, this is a company that made bombers in World War II. They made iron lungs for polio. And, and Jim said to his team, he said, look, we're Ford. Like, this is America. We have to step up. We have to help. And they made ventilators. They made uh, respirators to help keep frontline workers safe. I think there's a lot of credit here, actually. So, Liz, one of the things that the book does, it shows how the response to 2008 financial crisis actually set the stage for these companies to survive the COVID financial crisis. Tell us about that. You have to remember 2008, uh it, the government took about nine months to do what it did in about six or eight weeks in 2020. Um, and that's the difference between where we are now, which again is strange, but certainly not where we were in 2009, 10, 11, mm -hmm. this deep economic funk that lasted for years. The lesson is 
is get money out fast. And we can debate, you know, whether, you know, went to the right people or we can talk about the moral hazard of bailouts. But there's a trade off between getting money out the door quickly and getting it exactly where it needs to go. Um, and they spent a lot of money very fast. Certainly the spigot, I think, was probably open too wide for too long, which explains some of the inflation that we've seen now. Uh, but I think this playbook should go right back on the shelf and get pulled off uh, again when almost certainly one thing or another, we will need it. It's a fascinating book. And it reads in some places like a thriller. These companies just wing it trying to figure out how to get through the pandemic and succeeding in doing it. The book is called Crash Landing Semaphore's Liz Hoffman. Great to see you. Congrats on the book. Yeah, Thank congrats. you for having me.